hello everyone uh, welcome to this video series on java technologies lab so in this video i am going to demonstrate the first program so i am going to show the code and explain briefly what the code does so before actually going to start so i assume that uh, every one of you has already java installed okay jdk 18 or 19 it doesn't matter uh, i think i assume that every everyone has java installed on their system so to check whether java is working or not uh, you open the command prompt and you type java version and you should see something like this so on my system the version of java that is installed is 18 okay all right and in the previous video i have shown you how to download and uh, how to start the ja, ja, <coughs> how to start the eclipse ide so one thing you need to do is mm, you go to the window menu click on preferences and in the preferences you click on java okay and go to install JREs and on the right hand side you should uh, take care that the JDK you have installed is here okay so just uh, click this right the JDK you have installed and click apply and click on apply and close that's all now let's see how to create a java project so you have a direct link here for creating a java project otherwise you can go to the file menu you go to new and click on this java project okay right so you immediately you will get a create java project dialog box like this so in the project name just give some project name like java lab and here in the jre section you should take care that whatever jdk or java you have installed it is selected so mine is java 18 so i have selected java se 18 and for you if this module is checked just uncheck this okay don't check it uncheck this and click you can click on finish or otherwise if you want to click next go to click uh, go to next okay it will show you this folder structure like this and you click finish okay so you can see your project is created here java underscore lab okay now what you need to do is file new let's create a java class okay so click on class uh, leave this package name like this and in the name that is the class name view reg form so we are going to create a registration form so i am giving the name reg form uh, click on finish okay so the file is generated here reg form.java and some code uh, default code is generated for you automatically so now what i will do is i will just remove this code and paste the code which i have already copied okay so this is actually a big program so total there are uh, 175 lines of code okay so don't worry i will provide the code and all the things in the form of a pdf which will be available the link for which will be available in the description of the video so click the description of the video and click on the link so you will automatically get uh, the code and all the theory associated with this program okay so let me explain you uh, briefly about this program so if you click on this green button that is for running the program just click run so this is the output 
okay so this is the output of the program so if you observe this program or uh, you if you observe this output so this this uh, rectangle that you are seeing is called a j frame okay so which is shown here so our class extends j frame so j frame is a class which is available in java x dot swing package okay so don't worry about this uh, implements action listener i will come to this later but for now uh, focus on this j frame okay now if you go down you will have a main method i think all of you are familiar with this main, main method in java so simply what i am doing in the main method is i am saying the class name reg form object equal to new again the same class name reg form okay so what is going to happen when this line is executed this constructor is going to execute right the constructor of the reg form class so the constructor of the reg form class is here so this is all this all this thing is reg form constructor so it's a little bit lengthy follow follow carefully okay so this blue highlighted section is reg form constructor so what we are doing inside this form uh, i mean what we are doing inside this constructor so if you see uh, this entire form you can divide this form into 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 seven sections right and of course there is one more blank section here let's say eight eight rows are there okay one two three four five six seven and this last one eight rows are there right so what i did in the program is for every row i have added a container called as j panel this one okay for every row i have created a j panel so for example if you see this first row there is a invis uh, actually the panel is there but it is invisible okay panel is an invisible container where you have placed two components one is this label another one is this text field okay so for whatever components or controls i am creating i have already declared them at the top okay so these all these three belongs to the first row okay so what does the first row contain a panel inside that panel we have a label and we have a text field so these are the three j panel panel name j label the label name and j text field the text field name i mean these things are variables right you have already learned these things in core java okay similarly for the second row again we have a panel p2 again we have a label again we have a text field similarly for third row also the same but fourth row we have again a panel invisible panel which is there again we have a label for this course and what are these three things radio buttons okay one two three three radio buttons and for radio buttons we have to create a new thing called a button group okay just remember this whenever you are creating radio buttons we have to create one more thing called as button group so after creating the radio buttons we will add them to this button group bg1 so if you don't create the button group what happens is you can select two or more options which should not happen right you should be able to select only one option you can't select two or more options okay so to enable that property we are uh, creating a button group okay so coming to panel 5 this is the panel okay so we have a label and we have five radio buttons okay label radio button one two three four five and again we are creating another button group just like we did here at the top okay so that is the fifth row 
and sixth row is this one so we have a label called section and then we have something called as combo box okay so what should be displayed in the combo box that i have created here by using a one dimensional array okay so this thing is creating a one dimensional array array name is section and the array members are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay and uh, seventh row is two buttons are there so you have one panel and two buttons okay and there is eight section also but it is currently empty right nothing is displayed here so actually what is what is there here is we have a panel and inside the panel we have a label which is not being shown here right now you are not seeing anything right okay now how do you actually create the components is whenever you create objects or how, how do you create objects whenever you use the new keyword right okay so here i am creating a panel and then i am creating an actual label which says student register number right so this is uh, this is the text that is being displayed here student register number okay after that what i am doing i am creating a text field which holds 30 characters so this text field length is 30 characters okay so once you create the label and the text field you add them to the panel okay so panel name is p1 so i am adding the label and text field to the panel p1 okay so with this my first row is completed i, ha I have created the first row okay similarly you do the same thing for second row and third row same okay and for the fourth row this is a little bit different so what you can do is so let me adjust this okay now it is visible i think right for the fourth row as usual we created a panel we created the label called course okay now we are creating the radio button btech so this is how you create a radio button by using the class j radio button and the text you want to display is given here btech similarly you create the mtech and you create the third one others okay now after creating the radio buttons you will add them to the button group okay like this button group dot add this first one okay similarly add second one m tech and similarly add third one okay so that is what is done here and now after adding all the radio buttons to the button group you will add the label and the radio buttons to the panel p4 so this completes the fourth row which is this so similarly you create the fifth row in the same manner that you created this uh, this row you create the next row also and then we move on to the sixth row which contains combo box so this is how you create the combo box so if you see here in the constructor i am giving something called section so what is this section so this value is coming from here section is an array which contains 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay so that that thing we are specifying here so actually when you click on this arrow you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay and you can choose any one of these things okay and the uh, seventh row is buttons so you create the buttons like this by writing new j button submit new j button clear so that is the text being displayed here okay and then you add the buttons to the panel okay so that is the thing and similarly you create the last row which contains a panel a label and you add this label to the panel and you display the panel here 
okay so if you see here there is nothing inside this label okay it is empty so that's why nothing is being displayed here okay for example if i change this to high and if i run the program again now you can see high here right okay so let's take this out we don't want high to be displayed we want it empty so after creating all the eight rows so this all code this code entire code is creating the eight rows now you add each panel that is eight panels one two three four five six seven eight to the frame okay you are adding all the panels eight panels to the frame okay so that, that is how this entire thing is being displayed first we are creating a panel for each row into the panel we are adding what whatever you whatever we want like that we are creating eight panels and finally we are adding eight panels to the frame frame is this this window is called as frame okay and see the next line we are setting the size of the frame 500 and 600 500 is the length of the frame and 600 is the height of the frame okay and then we are setting the title of the frame to registration form it is displayed here this is the thing registration form and then we are using the set layout method which i have uh, which i discussed uh, discussed in the theory video okay i told you we will use a method called set layout and what layout manager we are using the layout manager we are using is grid layout okay so 10 represents the number of rows and one represents the number of columns so what so what i have done in here is i am creating space for 10 rows 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 although we are not using 9 and 10 we are creating uh, row, rows for them okay and the column is only one so this entire thing is a single column okay and then finally we are displaying the frame okay set visible true if you write false here the frame will not be displayed okay and next one is set resizable is set to false so if you observe here i am not get, i am not getting this uh, maximize button right it is grayed out and also if i go to the edge of the frame i am not getting any uh, resize uh, marker right that is because the resizable property is set to false you can't change the size and last one is a method called as set default close operation whose value is set to j frame dot exit on close so what does this say is when you click the close button what to do okay when you click this red button what to do you just simply exit that is what it is saying exit on close okay so this is the whole code for creating the gui okay i mean for creating this registration form okay now let's come to the second part so here you have the grid layout manager which is available in the package java.awt i told you in the theory video that there is one more package called java.awt it's actually a old version right and swing is a newer version of the gui controls okay so second part is so uh, when i click on this submit button what should happen okay when i click on the submit button what should happen so for example if i give the data here one two three four five six registration number student name ramesh okay student mobile number double nine double eight double seven double six double five and i choose the course btech branch as csc and section as three and click on submit see what happens when i click on submit uh, 
all the details are being shown here right registration number one two three four five six name is ramesh student mobile number is this one course is selected as btec branch is selected as csc and section is selected as three and when i click on clear it's going away okay so uh, just a few seconds i think this is not needed here okay right uh, so how, how is this happening when i click the submit button uh, how, how are we getting all the details in the label so first thing you have to notice here is after writing extends j frame i have written something called implements action listeners okay so what we are doing is we are performing event handling okay we are performing event handling to handle any event for example clicking a button uh, clicking a button represents something called action event okay so clicking a button represents action event so for action event there is a listener interface called as action listener that's why i am writing implements action listeners for, for example when you click a button if you want to do something that is when you write this implements action listener so this is the first thing you need to do okay second thing is so when you click a button okay so when i click this button something should happen so for this button i should attach something called as add action listener so if you see here i have added uh, action listener to both the buttons that is submit button and clear button so this is what you write button dot add action listener of this similarly for the second button also add action listener of this okay you should uh, you should be careful this thing and this thing at the top should match action listener action listener so this is the second step okay first step is you implement the listener interface action listener interface second step is you register the buttons with the action listener okay and third step is you implement the uh, interface action listener interface method so the method name is called as action perform okay and it takes an uh, object of action event class okay so that is the thing so this is the third step and inside this method we have written some more code so if you see here i am writing e dot get action command what is e here this is the object that we have written here it is an object of action event so i am checking if i have clicked the button submit or not okay so we have two buttons here one is submit another one is clear so i am checking whether i have clicked this button or this button right if the if i have clicked the submit button this code will be executed okay if i click the submit button this code will be executed if i click at the clear button this code will be executed okay so if you see here if i click submit it is displaying all the text i mean all these values if i click clear everything is going going off right okay right and coming to the submit button code what we are doing is we are getting what value we have entered in the text field uh, i mean what we have entered in this text field and then mm, let me resize this okay now it is better so this is going to get whatever value i am entering here for example this value and then we are displaying name equal to whatever we have entered here for example harsha so that is this value okay and next one is the mobile number here 
double nine, double eight, double seven, double six, double five. That is this third one. Dot get text, and after that, uh, we are checking which radio button I am selecting. Okay, if the first radio button is selected, we are uh, uh, displaying that text B, B text. If the second radio button is selected, we are displaying M text. Otherwise, we are uh, displaying other. Similarly, you will do for this next row also. Same. It is same. Okay. And then uh, let me select B Tech and let me select branches ECE. And then if I am selecting section 3, that we are displaying using combo box dot get selected item. So this method is going to return this value 3. Okay. And all these things, all these values are being displayed in the label. So I told you now there is some empty label here. Now we are displaying all these values in the empty label. That is what is happening here. So when I click on submit, you see all the values are coming here. Or otherwise, if I click the clear button, what happens? Everything, all these values will be gone. Yes, it's gone. Okay. So that is the first program. So even though the program is uh, large or lengthy if you understand it as parts it is very easy okay i hope you understood this first program so if you liked the video just click the like button and if you have any doubts in this program uh, please comment in the comment section uh, i will see those things and reply you as soon as possible okay so that's it for this uh, video thank you